Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, uh, with me, there is uh, Dr. Megan Ma from Stanford Center for Legal Informatics. Uh, hi, Megan. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as we are discussing about AI, uh, maybe you, you tell us about the recent projects you are involved in Stanford uh, in, in AI projects. Yes, absolutely. So um, at Codex or the Stanford Center for Legal Informatics, uh, we've been, like everyone else, swept up in the storm of large language models, generative AI, and um, not too long ago, during our sort of big flagship event at Future Law, we did a workshop specifically working with legal professionals and helping them gain a better understanding of what are the technicalities and what should people understand about um, these models. Uh, and so most recently, uh, we'll be hosting actually a large language model and law hackathon at the law school. Um, essentially, what we realized um, over at Codex and over here at Stanford is that while there are sort of these rapid rates of developments, I think the worlds are oyster still in what are practical use cases. Um, some of the areas of research that we've been looking into in particular, sort of, you know, on the industry already, there's a lot about, you know, how do you use large language models to generate contracts? How do you use it for legal briefs and all of that? For us, we were kind of most interested in the space of how these models can interact with each other. So one of the papers that was of particular excitement for us is one called Hugging GPT. It was a paper about how a number of researchers had leveraged ChatGPT, its functionality as being really powerful in um, conversing with humans and using it to almost act like a hotel concierge. You know, when you go to a concierge and say like, hey, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, and they tell you what to do. Basically, using Hugging GPT, they're enabling a channel where you can use ChatGPT to then direct the task to a model that is more powerful. And these researchers understood that uh, something like Hugging Face, they have an entire repository of open source AI models that all do different functionalities. So if you can imagine, hey, I want to paint a picture, maybe I will use ChatGPT as the interface and it will direct me to mid-journey or stable diffusion to actually do the task. So we've been interested in how do you actually conceptualize this in the legal space and can we use something like Hugging GPT for legal work? The other thing that we got really excited about is this idea of generative agents. So autonomous kind of AI models interacting with one another. What's interesting is, can we build AI models that interact with one another that become almost training tools for lawyers? So a lot of lawyers, you know, maybe they're kind of new or, you know, they spend their first few years as entry level associates, they might be a little bit nervous about how you go into contract negotiation, mm -hmm. how you do litigation and all of that. And a lot of it requires very labor intensive or sort of time consuming mentorship. So can we build tools like using generative agents that actually kind of simulate this type of mentorship? Do you see change of approach uh, this, especially this year of lawyers approach to, to AI? Yeah. So I think I'm sure you're aware of this already, but every time there are new technologies that are developed in the legal space, the legal kind of world is much slower to adapt. It goes to show that, you know, there's going to be a change coming. I think it'll be interesting in terms of behavioral change for the lawyers. And the reason I say this is because even if you don't actively um, subscribe to any particular legal AI tool, um, the kind of news of Microsoft and doing Copilot um, that project or Google integrating AI into Google Workspace, in one way or another, I think that lawyers will be using tools that are driven by AI. But it's unclear to me, I guess, the more behavioral change side, like will lawyers change their processes and how much of the process will change, that I think is still to yet to come and yet to be determined. 
But in terms of the actual tools, we can certainly see that there's going to be a much faster rate of adoption. Okay, great discussion. Uh, thank you, Megan, for, for interesting uh, information and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Mikael.